Welcome back to Nigeria 2015. We're coming to you live from our studios in Lagos. Monitoring the elections, uh, build up to the elections. Well, it's time for the headline news now with Adeshawa Josh. Well, thanks a lot, Chamberlain. Those are the top stories this hour. The election petition tribunal here in matters on the August the 9th governorship election in Oshun State has declared Raoul Fareg Beshala of the All Progressive Congress as winner of the election. At the final hearing of the petition filed by the PDP candidate in election, Iyola Omishuri, the chairman of the three-man panel, Justice Elizabeth Ikpejume, ruled that the tri tribunal had no reason whatsoever to disregard the result of the election as announced by the Independent National Electoral Commission in all the 17 local government areas under contention. Justice Ikpejume explained that the petitioner failed to prove his case as none of his witnesses were able to establish any evidence regarding the allegations of improper and inappropriate accreditation, multiple and underage voting, mutilation of resource sheets, and harassment of voters, among others. While the judgment lasted, security in and around the court premises was beefed up as security agents manned every space to forestall breakdown of law and order. And it's just eight days to the first set of the 2015 general elections, and things don't seem to have taken perfect shape just yet. Voters in Lagos, Nigeria's commercial hub, are still grappling with the collection of their permanent voter card. The Independent National Electoral Commission says it has decentralized the collection centers, but it appears the case is not even, as several cards are still in the custody of the commission. Meanwhile, a startling discovery by Channels Television reveals holes in the new system INEX says it has employed which they say is expected to make the register difficult to compromise. In the meantime, the Independent National Electoral Commission is to hold a consultative meeting with the chairman and secretary of all registered political parties, as well as the resident electoral commissioners, tomorrow, Saturday, February the 7th. According to a statement signed by the spokesman to the INEC chairman, the commission is expected to address a press conference after the meeting to brief the nation on its decision with regard to whether or not the general elections will hold as currently scheduled. The meeting is coming two days after the INEC boss, Professor Tahiru Jega, briefed the National Council of State on its readiness to begin the conduct of the general elections on February the 14th. The council had advised the INEC boss to go ahead with its preparations for the elections as scheduled, but to address Nigerians on its final decision after consultations with the relevant bodies. Well, those are the top stories this hour. It's back to you, Chamberlain. Well, thank you, Adesha, well, Josh, and uh, getting back to this. We now have uh, reconnected with His Excellency Raoul Farag Bashola, Governor of Oshun State. Well, uh, thank you for joining us again today. Well, many have just heard the news and many have heard it again and good news to a lot of people, but not many know what exactly this means. What do you think, or what can you tell us about the implication of this judgment? Well, it is hard for the people of Oshun to have choice, and it is hard for democracy. I'm happy, the people are joyous, and there is excitement, huge excitement, all over the state. In terms of the build-up to this judgment, because there was a lot that was making the rounds in the news about who was doing what, but eventually this judgment came. Would you say that having gotten this judgment as it has been delivered, it has set a good precedence from a legal perspective? Well, in the first instance, there isn't anything to about if if you recall in the over three thousand police units where the election took place in a show on the ninth of August there was no incident anywhere. As a matter of fact the state was open with uh, security operatives. There were over seventy three thousand operatives. When we divide the number of operatives with the number of police units, we had uh, 25 heavily armed, some wide looking security operatives in each 
with over 3,000 police units. I was not even allowed to leave my official residence until the morning of the election. My deputy was arrested. Over a thousand of our own party leaders were arrested all over the place in the early morning of the day of the election. So we have, we have had the opportunity to even do anything on towards. None at all. But in the wisdom of the petitioner and our opponent, the fact that some advantage could be had through the court, the appellate the court today rejected the having the steel the issue in the petition came with a very clear logic that we won the election on all grounds. Haven't the, the, this judgment has reaffirmed uh, your position as the governor of the state? It means that you're expected to take your leadership role a notch higher. Are you going to reach out to every other person such that you could all build the state together? I must remind you immediately after my visit was announced on the night of on the tenth of August last year. I held a lot the olive branch inviting all my opponents in the election to come around and let us build our state together. So that that objective is clearly there. We welcome all to be part of the process of rebuilding our state, taking it to a greater height, guaranteeing for the people stability, peace, progress and prosperity. All right, then, uh, congratulations, Your Excellency. That's where we have to let it go today, and uh, My pleasure. all the best. I must thank your television station and you, too. Grateful to you. Thank you. Uh, that was His Excellency, uh, Raul Farag Bashola, Governor of Ocean State.